you and be with you is my prayer in Jesus holy name this is brother Alma from the Cape Town Tabernacle Church and I will be sharing with you the message of the hour not a new message but the message that we have heard right from the very beginning the biblical message the scriptural message the end time message so may the Lord Jesus bless you and may he be with you is my prayer for those of you that have just joined us wherever in the world you are may the Lord bless you and may he be with you. Yes, we listen to a very beautiful song that lifts up our faith, that builds our faith. It speaks about only believe. All things are possible, only believe. And this, these words come from the Holy Bible where Jesus himself said in the book of Matthew 29 from verse 26 to verse 28, only believe all things are possible. With men it shall be impossible, but with God it shall be possible. Even Luke 1 verse 37, the Bible speaks about with God, nothing shall be impossible. So may the Lord bless you and may he be with you. For those of you that have your Bibles ready, please turn with me to the book of Isaiah. Isaiah chapter number 61. And we shall read from verse 1. Isaiah 61. The Spirit of the Lord God is upon me, because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives, and the opening of the prison to them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord, and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all that mourn, to appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. May the Lord add his blessings to the reading of his word. Now, we want to speak this morning about what the scripture calls the acceptable year of the Lord. Hallelujah. Now we're reading from the book of Isaiah, and Isaiah is known as the Messianic prophet. No other prophet spoke as much about the Messiah as Isaiah, and in so much detail. Now all the prophets spoke about him, all of them pointed to him. Even in Luke 24, Jesus said that all that was written of him in the prophets, in the Psalms, and in the law of Moses had to be fulfilled. And the prophets all pointed to Christ. And all the prophets could say, thus saith the Lord. But when Jesus came, he did not say, thus saith the Lord. He said, verily, verily, I say unto you, because he was the Lord. That's why he did not say, thus saith the Lord, but he spoke as the Lord. The same Lord of the Old Testament is the same Lord of the New Testament. The same God that was above us in the Old Testament became Emmanuel, God with us in the New Testament. And even today, he is God within us. <clears throat> so it's God above us, God with us, and God in us. And Isaiah was called as a young man into the ministry. We see in Isaiah chapter 6, where he sees this vision, and heaven opens, and he sees God sitting on his throne. And he sees the host of heaven on his left and on his right hand. And he realizes that he is a sinful man. And he cries out and he says, Woe unto me, for my eyes have seen the Lord of hosts. And he pronounces himself a sinner. But God sends one of the heavenly creatures, which are called seraphim. And Isaiah describes them in detail in chapter 6. He speaks about them as having six wings. Two with which they fly, two with which they covered their faces, and two with which they covered their feet. And one of the seraphim took a coal from the altar and placed it upon the lips of Isaiah and purified Isaiah. And when God asked, who shall I send and whom shall go? Isaiah answered and said, here am I, Lord, send me. And God placed him into the ministry and God sent him to his people Israel and Isaiah spoke about great events that was to come and if you summarize the book of Isaiah it has 66 chapters and if you summarize the Bible it also has 66 books 
And Isaiah speaks of all the main stuff from Genesis to Revelation. And you can actually summarize Genesis to Revelation in the book of Isaiah. He speaks about all the great things that happened and that was to come. And we see in the life of Isaiah, God showed him many things. He was a prophet. A prophet is a seer. So he saw visions. God showed him future events that was to come. God also revealed to him the sins of people. So he was a man that was in contact with God. He was connected to God. And he could hear God's voice. Just as clear as you can hear my voice, Isaiah heard the voice of God. God spoke to him and God gave him instructions. And Isaiah, being the Messianic prophet, spoke largely about the Messiah. Starting from his birth in Isaiah 7 verse 14. He said, Behold, the virgin shall conceive and bear a son, and they shall call his name Emmanuel, which is being interpreted meaning God with us. Isaiah 9 verse 5 and 6, he spoke about a child is born unto us and a son is given and the government shall be upon his shoulder and he shall be called wonderful, mighty God, counselor, prince of peace, everlasting father. He spoke in detail about the Messiah that was to come and he says that this child that will be born, the son, the son will be called the everlasting father, he will be called the mighty God, hallelujah. So Isaiah knew exactly who the Messiah was. And many people are still in confusion and are still wondering who the Messiah is and who the Messiah is in relationship to God. But Isaiah made it very plain that the Messiah will be called the everlasting father. He will be called the mighty God. So when the Messiah comes, the Messiah is God himself. And Isaiah spoke in further detail in Isaiah 11 about the ministry of the Messiah. He spoke how that these miraculous things would happen. And he spoke in uh, chapter 35 about how that the sick would be healed, how that the blind would see, how that the crippled, crippled will walk, how that the Messiah will do all these great and wonderful things. He even spoke in Isaiah 11 in Isaiah 65 <coughs> about the reign of the Messiah upon the earth and he spoke how that it will be absolutely peace how that a child will play at a snake's hole and how that the snake will not harm him how that the lion will be in the field together with the, the sheep and the one will not destroy the other and there will be no harm and violence he spoke about these future events that was to come under the reign of the Messiah. And therefore he rightfully qualifies to be called the Messianic prophet because he spoke so much in detail about the Messiah. Now in chapter number 61, he speaks, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me because the Lord hath anointed me to preach good tidings unto the meek. He hath sent me to bind up the brokenhearted to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of prison to them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord. Now we see what Isaiah was predicting here. He was predicting not only was the Spirit of God upon him, but the Spirit would also be upon the Messiah. And to be anointed, the word Messiah means the anointed one. The word Christ means the anointed one. So for somebody to be anointed or somebody to be the Messiah, he has to be the anointed one. And he spoke about the Messiah, which would be the anointed one, which is Christ. And how did God would put his spirit upon the Messiah? And we know this happened also in Matthew chapter 3, after Jesus was baptized of John. The Bible says that he came up from the water and then the spirit of God came descending upon him in the form of a dove. And there came a voice from heaven saying, This is my beloved son, in whom I am well pleased. Listen to him. And we see right there the spirit of the Lord God coming upon the Messiah. And the Messiah was anointed. He was anointed to do a work. He was anointed to do the work of God himself. And with the coming of the Messiah was also the start of a new dispensation, a new era. Now in the Bible, we have different eras or different epochs. We have different time frames or dispensation. We see that from the time of Abraham up till the time of Moses, or from the time of Adam up till the time of Moses, 
there was no law given and that was another period of time that was the conscience age that was when the bible was not yet in written form but when moses came the bible became in written form and then we see that the law came through moses so a new era started with moses a new era wherein the law of god was given now the bible says in luke 16 verse 16 that the law and the prophets are until were until john from hence the kingdom of god is being preached so we see that when john the baptist started and he introduced the messiah and the messiah came upon the scene a new era also started and this era is known as the day of grace this is identical to what isaiah was talking about when he said the acceptable year of the lord and when jesus was upon the earth he also read the scripture which we just read this morning in isaiah 61 and jesus was speaking he was speaking about the scripture and after he read it you can read luke 4 verse 21 he said this day the scripture is fulfilled and he was the one that came to proclaim the acceptable year of the lord the acceptable year of the lord is another era another dispensation in which god makes known and available his salvation not just to the people of israel but to all peoples of all nations it is the time when god accepts all people because he sent a sacrifice upon the cross and the sacrifice was christ himself that offered himself as a sacrifice for the sins of many and whosoever believes in christ can now be accepted by god god comes to us in christ and the only way that we can come to god is via christ jesus says in john 14 verse 6 he says i am the way the truth and the life no man comes to the father except through me god's way to us was through christ and our way back to god is also through christ and all that believe on jesus christ and accept the sacrifice he made on the cross can now be accepted by god it is the acceptable year of the lord it is the day of grace it is the time of salvation and god made this plain in isaiah 49 and verse 6 he said behold in an acceptable time i have heard thee and in the day of, of uh, grace i have helped you in the day of salvation behold now is the acceptable time now is the day of salvation so we see the acceptable time and the acceptable year and we know that a year is a, a way of calculating time so the acceptable year and acceptable time is identical it is the day of grace when god makes his salvation available to all people of all nations upon the earth so this is the acceptable year of the lord this is really it started when our lord jesus christ came down when he came down when he left heaven for earth and he came to save us he came to save the lost he came to heal the sick he came to restore us back unto himself and he did this by the sacrifice he made on the cross of calvary now we read about it in luke chapter 4 where jesus read the scripture and jesus made it known and jesus said that this day the scripture is fulfilled now the scripture was written in isaiah's day but in the day of jesus christ it was fulfilled jesus is the manifestation of the scripture jesus is the bible in flesh jesus is the bible manifested the bible says in john 1 verse 1 in the beginning was the word and the word was with god and the word was god and the word became flesh and dwelt among us so jesus is the bible manifested the bible is jesus in letter form so jesus made the bible come alive when he was upon the earth he made the letter become alive in a reality so we see the acceptable year of the lord we are still living in the acceptable year of the lord we are still living in the acceptable time we are still living in the day of salvation and god makes salvation available to all people and god's salvation was provided on calvary when christ was sacrificed as the lamb of god that takes away the sins of the world when he shed his blood and laid down his life 
The Bible says in the book of Hebrews 9 verse 22, And without the shedding of blood, there is no remission of sins. So Christ had to shed his blood so that our sins could be forgiven. Our sins was what separated us between us and God. Our sins was really what made us not to be able to come into the presence of Almighty God because our sins took us away from God. But when Christ came in the middle and laid down his life and sacrificed himself, he took our sins away by the shedding of his blood. He took the judgment of our sins upon himself. And if we believe in him, we can be accepted by God. Now, no one can be accepted on the basis of his good works. No one can be accepted on the basis of him doing something good. But our good works sometimes become as filthy rags in the sight of God. But it is only and only through the blood of Christ that we have access to the throne of grace. It is only through Christ that we have access to heaven because he shed his blood. And it is only his blood that is holy and pure that could pay and atone for the sins of the world. The Bible says in John 3 verse 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whosoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. Now God did not send his son into the world <coughs> to condemn the world, but that the world might be saved through him. He that believes in him is not condemned, but he that does not believe is condemned already. That is John 3, verse 16, 17, and verse 18. So through Christ, a way of salvation has been made. The way of salvation has been made by the shedding of his blood. And if we accept Christ, God can also accept us. If we accept the sacrifice that was made on Calvary, then we can also be accepted through that sacrifice. And we are still living in that day, the day of the Lord, the day of grace, the, great, the day of salvation, I mean. We are still living in the acceptable year of the Lord. And we see that when Christ came down, he really did as Isaiah 61 says, he came to bind up the broken, uh, broken hearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to them that are bound. These verses correspond with Isaiah 42, where the Bible also speaks how that when the Messiah will come, how that he will open the prison doors and how that he would set the captives free. Those that are captive, uh, held captive by sin, those that are held captive by Satan. We read this in Isaiah 42, where it speaks about Christ. Behold my servant whom I uphold, mine elect, in whom my soul delighteth. I have put my spirit upon him. He shall bring forth judgment to the Gentiles. He shall not cry, nor lift up, nor cause his voice to be heard in the street. A bruised reed shall he not break, and the smoking flesh shall he not quince. And he shall bring forth judgment a judgment unto truth. He shall not fail or be discouraged till he have set up judgment in the earth, and the owls shall wait for his law. We see in verse 7, to open the blind eyes, to bring out the prisoners from prison, and them that sit in darkness out of the prison house. And that is what Christ came to accomplish, and that is what he is still doing. He is still setting the captives free, those that are bound by sin, those that are bound by sickness, those that are bound by evil spirits. Those that are bound by the power of the devil, Christ came to set them free. Those that are meek, he brings the good tidings because he is the anointed one. He is the Christ. He is the Messiah. He is the one that is chosen. Hallelujah. Now, beloved, we're going to take a break. We're going to listen to that song again, Only Believe. And then we're going to return to the message, the acceptable year of the Lord. May the Lord bless you. Only peace.
just as much as we believed five years ago. We believe you, and we thank you, and we ask in the mighty name of Jesus Christ for the power of Almighty God to fill not only her heart, but her physical body, and that healing be affected in the name of Jesus we say it. By the power of Almighty God, in the name of Jesus we ask in the name of my precious Lord, to touch Lord of you. message of the hour we're talking this morning about the acceptable year of the lord as we read from isaiah 61 from verse 1 to verse 3 and we see that christ only read the first part of the verse where he speaks about the acceptable year of the lord the other part of the verse the second part of the verse he didn't read only the first part the second part of the verse speaks of the day of vengeance of our god and he did not read that scripture as it was not yet time for the scripture to be fulfilled. Now in Luke, Luke chapter, chapter 4 from verse 18, we see, if we read verse 17, and there was delivered unto him the book of the prophet Isaiah. And when he had opened the book, he found the place where it was written, the spirit of the Lord is upon me because he have anointed me to preach the gospel to the poor. He have sent me to heal the brokenhearted, to preach deliverance to the captives and the recovering of sight to the blind to set at liberty them that are bruised, to preach the acceptable year of the Lord. <clears throat> and he closed the book and he gave it again to the minister and sat down. And the eyes of all that were in the synagogue were fastened on him. And he began to say unto them, This day is the scripture fulfilled in your ears. Praise the Lord. So we see he didn't read the other part. <coughs> he didn't read the part in Isaiah 61 that speaks of the day of vengeance. Because that day is still to come. But he read the part where it says the acceptable year of the Lord. And after that he said this day, the scripture is fulfilled in your ears. And yes, it was the time for that scripture to be fulfilled. And a new era started there. The acceptable year of the Lord. 
the day of grace, the day of salvation, the acceptable time. And that day is still running. That era is still current. We are still living in the acceptable year of the Lord. We are still living in the day of grace, in the time of salvation. We are still living in the acceptable time. And that time is now, the day of grace, where God saves, heals, and delivers. And we see that Jesus could proclaim and say, this day the scripture is fulfilled. And we are once living, once again living in a day. In the day where the Bible scripture is being fulfilled, Bible prophecy is being fulfilled. We are living in a day where so many scriptures are fulfilled in our ears. There are those that have eyes that cannot see. There are those that have ears that cannot hear. But we are once again living in a day where we can say, this day, this scripture is fulfilled. We read about the return of Christ, and that is what we're looking for. We're looking for the second coming of Christ to take place. We're looking for Jesus to come upon the clouds of heaven as he had promised. Not to the earth, but upon the clouds of heaven. The Apostle Paul even wrote about this in detail in 1 Thessalonians 4, verse 13 to verse 18, where he says that he doesn't want us to be ignorant concerning those that have fallen asleep. But he says that when the, 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 the rapture takes place, the second coming of Christ, he says, the Lord himself shall descend from heaven with a shout, with the voice of the archangel, and with the sound of the trumpet of God. And the dead in Christ shall rise first, and then and us that remain, we will be changed in the twinkling of an eye, in a moment of time, at the last trumpet, when the trumpet of God shall sound, according to 1 Corinthians 15, and the dead shall be raised incorruptible. We are living in the time where Jesus promised that he would come. He went into his father's house, and there is many mansions. And he goes to prepare a place for us. But he will come and he will receive us. He will take us so that we can be also where he is. We are living once again in that day where scriptures are being fulfilled. We read, for instance, in Matthew 25, where Jesus says that we should take heed that no man deceives us. That many shall come and say, I am the Christ. And Jesus says there will be wars and rumors of wars and earthquakes in diverse places there shall be uh, pestilences and nations shall rise against nation and kingdom against kingdom we read this in matthew 24 from verse 5 to verse 14 where jesus gives many signs that would first happen before his return would take place where he speaks about all these catastrophes and disasters that would strike the earth and how that christians would be persecuted on a global scale we read about it in Luke chapter number 17 where Jesus compares the times and he says that as it was in the days of Noah, so shall it be in the day of the Son of Man. And we see once again the world is in the same condition as it was in the days of Noah. The earth has become corrupt and full <coughs> of violence. And once again the thoughts and the intentions of man's heart is continually evil. We see Jesus speaking in Luke 17 that as it was in the days of Lot, so shall it be in the days of the Son of Man. And we see the world is in the same condition as it was in the days of Lot. It is in the same solemn condition. It is in the same sexual perverted condition as it was in the days of Lot. And the Bible says that God rained fire and brimstone upon the city and destroyed it after Lot went out with his family from the city. We see this day, this scripture is also fulfilled that the world is as it was in the days of Lot. The world is as it was in the days of Noah. We read in Mark 13 verse 12 where Jesus says that children shall rise against their parents and kill them. We read in the book of 1 Timothy chapter 4 that the Spirit speaks expressly that in the latter times some shall depart to the, from the faith. And he shall give heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of demons. We read in 2 Timothy chapter 3, where the Bible gives a detailed description of what the world will be like in the last days. And we read in 2 Timothy chapter 3 that the Spirit speaks expressively. The Spirit says this. Does he, we read 2 Timothy 3. I just want to go to the page where the Bible gives us a description of the last days. Thus know also that in the last days perilous times shall come, for men shall be lovers of their own selves, covetous, boasters, proud, blasphemers, disobedient parents, unthankful, unholy, without natural affection, truce breakers, false accusers, incontinent, fierce, despisers of those that are good, traitors, heady, high-minded, 
Lovers of pleasure more than lovers of God, having a form of godliness but denying the power thereof, from such turn away. And we can also say to this, that this day the scripture is fulfilled. Many scriptures are being fulfilled before our eyes. Even Luke 21 verse 25 where the Bible speaks about natural catastrophes that would strike the earth. Such as great tidal waves in the seas that would be roaring. We are living once again in the day of the fulfillment of Bible prophecy where God is fulfilling his word. So yes, we are still living in the acceptable day of the Lord and the return of Christ has not yet taken place. So the Lord can still save you. The Lord can still heal you. The Lord can still forgive you. The Lord can still give you his salvation. Hallelujah. Come to the Lord. Come to the Lord. Don't wait until it is too late. The Bible says in the Revelation 22 verse 17, the spirit and the bride says come and let him that hears, let him say come. Jesus says in Matthew 11 verse 28, Come unto me, all you that are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. So yes, you can still come to the Lord. Can we close our eyes? Dear Lord, the message has went forth, and we pray, Lord, that it will not return unto you void, but it will accomplish the mission for which you sent it. I pray, Lord Jesus, that you will just touch his heart and life and open the understanding, Lord, that people might understand the scriptures. Bless their hearts, Lord, and be with us. Till we meet again in Jesus' holy name. Amen. Beloved, my contact number is 078 721 0078721991. May the Lord bless you. May He be with you until the next time. As I go off the air, we listen to that song, Only Believe All Things Are Possible. God bless you.
would ask that your healing virtue would flow into those that need it, that watch by television today. You are able to perform miracles. You are able to do great and mighty things. And I ask it in the name of Jesus that it be done. And we give you, my Lord, the praise and the glory. <laughs> Hallelujah. Praise God. Just to have a touch, Lord, from you. Oh, it is Jesus. Oh, it is Jesus. Oh, it is Jesus in my soul. Oh, I have touched the love is tonight yeah. Yeah. Every day with you Lord. Oh, yeah. James 2 23 says Abraham believed how many believers here tonight and it says it was accounted to him for righteousness and he was called the friend of God Thank God that he calls us his friends. In spite of all that we have done, if we'll only believe, say only believe, only believe, only believe. Who am I? You are mindful of me, that you hear me when I call. Is it true that you are thinking of me? How you love me. It's amazing. 